Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, quick turnaround in uh, in a short week. We uh, actually had some uh, kind of a walkthrough last night uh, over in the indoor. Uh, watched the film of uh, of the Baylor game, and then uh, turned the page quickly and, and did a a walkthrough for about an hour on Texas, and then uh, um, worked a little bit later last night, and and we'll have our first real practice today. Uh, excited about the opportunity. Excited about the challenge. Um, you watch Texas on film. They're a, a really talented football team. I don't know what, what has gone on. I don't know um, why they're struggling. Um, but other than this league is really tough and it, and it's, it's a grind to win football games and uh, um, watching them on film, they're a really talented crew. And so we've got to, we've got to, we've got to rally our forces too. Obviously uh, we're banged up quite a bit uh, just like a lot of teams are. So, um, it was a physical game on, on Saturday night. So we've got to do a great job of working to get our players back physically as well as mentally and stuff uh, without banging them a ton this week, but getting our work done so that uh, uh, we can field the best outfit we can for, for next Friday morning at 11 o'clock. Chris, have you figured out you're playing a quarterback this week? Um, we, uh, there's an outside shot uh, actually of Skyler. Okay, so that's the positive side. He he, uh, I don't think he'll do anything today, um, and uh, Tuesday would be iffy. But the kid wants to play, and we're going to see where he's at. And I don't think that'll be determined until uh, later in the week. If he can't go, um, both both guys would be ready with Will and Jaron, and uh, Will would be the guy that we would start. What, what's Will? What's his role been like in practice all these weeks since he started his last game? You know, that's a great question. Uh, taken a lion's share of the reps uh, and has taken as many reps uh, with the twos and probably more than Jaron. We've split those up. Uh, sometimes we'll put him in uh, with the ones. So he's taken a, a lot of repetition. And, and I met with Will uh, yesterday afternoon for a while. And um, he's excited for the opportunity because he just feels like he's grown so much from watching Sky for the last, whatever, seven, eight weeks uh, in his preparation and, um, and visiting with him, whether it's in-game and uh, weekly stuff, as, as well as Jaron. I, I know that Jaron um, would be ready to do it as well uh, because I think they're, you know, those three guys are really close and they spend a lot of time together. Just given the fact that he has only played in four games, when you said you're not going to be able to register, yep. might have to play. Yeah. How, did, how did he react to that? Um, very positive, because um, he he knows this is a great opportunity for him uh, to play and uh, solidify himself, um, as well as he's played a lot of football to consider to still be a a, a freshman. And uh, um, you know, I I've I've seen enough situations in, in my time of coaching where. You're healthy and you have an opportunity to play. Typically, um, kids want to play because you just can't you can't forecast the future. What happens next August if something happens? And you know, knock on wood, nothing like that does. But uh, uh, the conversation that we had uh, yesterday, he's excited to play. John, would you like to prepare for two, possibly three quarterbacks on a short week? Uh, really challenging. Um, because we don't know who's going to play quarterback, but they don't know who's going to play quarterback for us. It's one of three as well. Um, but I, I think the offense will stay the offense. You, you play this many games uh, and, you know, maybe somebody does something a little bit better than others. We can't, we can't make wholesale changes no matter who plays quarterback for us on a three day prep in essence. Uh, having Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then getting on a flight on Thursday. And I would think they'd be the same way they do. They're very versatile and they do so many things on offense that I think they can fit whatever quarterback is, is healthy or whatever quarterback that, that can play for them. And lasting defensive observations from the uh, Baylor game after getting to watch that over again. You know, I thought we played really physical and I thought we played really hard. It was fun watching those guys for us on defense lay it on the line and play really fast and physical for four quarters and to play in a, uh, a mid November game, uh, at, at home that really had a bunch of meeting. I was proud of the way the guys, uh, flew around. That's a good Baylor team. I think everybody knows that that's a really good team and, and they had a, uh, a really good plan, but, uh, I was very pleased overall with how we played. We'd seen such an area of growth over the last 
month, Chris, and then there's, there's a, there's a, a day where you're not so successful. How have you seen the, maybe the mentality of this team since that loss, given the fact that you had so much success prior? Um, well, you know, it, it, that's the game of football too. Um, is, is you can be, you know, you can be stopped on any given day. You can, um, struggle to stop people, whatever it may be. Uh, yesterday was a, I thought an important day for us, as far as I thought our, our intentional focus and us detailing our work, we walked through for an hour and showed all these different things offensively and defensively. And I thought it was really sharp and crisp and it kind of lets me know of, of the maturity factor of our guys that, uh, um, we, we didn't play our best, uh, football at times, but we've got to move on and we have a great opportunity. We keep talking about having a special season and it's still there for us. And um, it's going to be uh, a really tough task to go to Texas on a short week, but I know our guys are excited about it. Kind of an aura about your mercy of Texas, a huge stadium the facilities. When you think about this will probably be the largest stadium you've, you've participated in hundred thousand people or hundred thousand capacity. Yeah. Was yeah, I think it is, you know, we were there in uh, 2019 um, and, and most of our guys were there in 2019. So um, and anticipating a, a good crowd. It's a fun environment. It's a, it's a, it's fun to, uh, to play the Van Malone, Texas Longhorns. What, what do you think is the biggest challenge when you look at this team on film? Uh, well, on, on defense, the ability to, to disrupt the passer, the ability to, um, you know, get upfield and, and cause havoc, uh, because they have such tremendous front seven, uh, they're, they're, Back end is, is is really good as well, but I think their front seven is is really good. And then offensively, they're they're, they're probably the biggest team we've played up front on the offensive line. Um, I know they don't have uh, the Robinson kid at running back, but the other guys are are really capable and really good running backs to rushing for 200 yards a game. And then they have special special talent at wide receiver that uh, can hit the home run on you at any time. How has <laughs> this season been for the head coach it's been <laughs> up and down and quick yeah it always goes quick Fitz. I, I you know you get to seems like we played on labor day weekend a hundred years ago and once you play that game you're like boy for next thing you know it's going to be close to halloween and then we get close to halloween and then next thing you know it's we you know we were struggling around that time we'd gotten i think one or two wins back and and next thing you know, it's going to be Thanksgiving. It, it's a, it's a grind for everybody, for the players, for the coaches, for the support staff, for you guys, it's a long season. And, um, um, you know, I I'm excited for our, our whole football team. And in particular, the seniors that there's an opportunity after this game to make sure that we're playing postseason. I remember when this stretch of game started seven in a row, injuries were a real concern. You seem to be doing pretty well with that until Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. We had, uh, I thought, some pretty good depth until until Saturday, and, and now we've been knocked down again. Um, it's probably a lot of schools like that, too. And so you hope all those young guy practices that you've done in, in uh, sessions with uh, players that maybe haven't played quite as much that uh, they're going to have an opportunity to even play a little bit more. And um that's going to probably be one of those weeks where we're going to have to have all hands on deck. We are going to use our exemption to take more players to this game. You know, you get one exemption a year. And so we're going to utilize that for this week to try to take uh, a good 10 to 15 more guys to give us some more depth on special teams. And Skyler's been here forever. I think he's 37 years old. Um, his body has just taken a beating. And how, how does he handle the mental side of that? I think he anticipates that this is going to be uh, a struggle and he takes care of his body really well, um, gets uh, lots of treatment, a lot of recovery. Um, when you get, you know, I don't care if any of those super seniors, I look at Fletch and J-Mac and those guys and, and yeah, they're, they're all beat up, but they don't know how much football they have left. All of them have aspirations of playing at the next level. And I hope they all get the opportunity, but you still, have, I look at Noah Johnson and, and Noah, if he could play every week for the next year, Noah would play every week. He just loves football and loves the competition and loves the practice and loves the, the grind of this. And that's, that's the, uh, you know, that kind of embodies our senior class as they, 
they love this time of year and it's fun when you're playing well. I know we lost on Saturday, but shoot, we're, we're playing good football uh, late in the season. And that's gotta be a lot of fun for those seniors. Finally, <clears throat> this is a silly question, but seven wins is nice, but eight feels much more substantial, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Uh, and it doesn't matter how you get there. It, it really doesn't, whether you started off slow or started off fast or where they come at wins, as, as we all know, are really hard to come by and, um, you cherish every one you, you have and, and those locker rooms are a lot of fun. And so, um, this will be a tough challenge, but it'd be a fun one to get. Where does John McPherson look like this Saturday? He'll be a, a, a game time decision. I don't know if J Mac, uh, will be able to play, but he's going to try like heck too, because he want, he's only got a few more games left, uh, that he knows he's going to play. Um, and, uh, uh, we got better news on J Mac yesterday. Um, we didn't think the news was going to be good, but it came back much, much better. So we're going to try to work him in and see what he can do uh, this week. And J Mac's a guy that even if he doesn't practice a whole lot, he knows it inside and out and uh, would provide us, whether it's 20 plays or 60 plays, he's in good enough shape. I don't think it's going to be 80 degrees down there that uh, if he can play, he'll play. Yeah. I, I think so. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain that one, Fitz. With the way Baylor attacks you with their defensive front, can you go to film and find ways to shore that up with your offensive well, well, we have to. Um, Baylor's really talented, and uh, Texas is no different. They've got really good front players, and, uh, um, you know, I, I think we broke down a couple times in protection. Um, you know, we um, we did a good job on first down. And we had some good plays on first down. We got a lot of second and shorts and second and mediums. And then then we'd have some issues and get back to third and long um, and needed to just continue to pound the football. And, and at the time, didn't realize it'd be that close of a game the whole way through. And it really was um, that um, we needed to just keep giving the ball inside to deuce and, and uh uh, keep moving the chains and and whether it's a little bit of play action here and there, try to do some of that and and not let them lay their ears back on third and long like they did. Looking back, running the ball a little bit more. You bet. Than the choice. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to get deuce more than 11 carries. And we only had 51 plays. I mean, part of that was us our inability on offense to sustain drives, but our inability of, on defense to get off the field uh, enough. And uh, Baylor does a lot what we want to do, control the time of possession and control the plays. And, and they did a great job of that. I knew they were going to go for it on fourth down a bunch. That's what they've done all year. And we stopped them a few times, but uh, they were able to uh, get a couple of fourth down conversions that gave them another eight or nine plays. That's three or four minutes off the clock. All right. I was, I was going to ask about J-Mac, but anybody else that uh, looks like they might be? Able yeah, to um, Skyler J-Mac that came out of the game that um, we'll learn more about later in the week. Joe Irvin came out of the game. Um, we'll learn more about him. Uh, we hope to get Spencer Trussell back. That's the positive side because we need Spence back, and he ran yesterday, so uh, that could give us a, a little bit of a lift getting another defensive lineman. Um, but, you know, our offensive line – and our defensive line came through healthy. Um, so uh, linebackers, running backs, everybody came through healthy there with the exception of Joe. Well, Chris, I guess I'll go next. Uh, you know, it's easy for us in the press box and then people on TV or even in the stands watching and, and to think that maybe the offensive line looked like it got dominated. But yep. when you go back and watch the film, did they play really maybe better than um, we would think? I think they could play better without question. Um, I think everybody uh, on offense could probably play a little bit better. I think we could call it a little bit better. I think we could design some plans. I mean, mess knows. I mean, we didn't have a great plan on third down for some of the things that they did. And uh, they did a great job of, of when we got in man coverage of, of gluing us down and in zone coverage, they did a great job of passing some things off. And then um, they just, they're relentless rushing the passer. And I don't care if they're rushing four or rushing five. I thought they did a great job of taking the first look away from Sky and then continuing to stay after it. And Sky wasn't getting out of the pocket. He was trying to stay in the pocket, which has been a great thing for us uh, over the last four weeks. And um, they just, they're so long and athletic in there uh, that uh, we probably could have, absolutely, we could have played better uh, up front. But um, give those guys credit. They're really talented, they're good up front. 
and you've said repeatedly how how special teams needs to be a difference maker, needs to be able to flip the field, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, take take away the the muff punt the other day. I, I think people would be shocked to see that that Philip only has sixty seven yards on punt return this year. Yeah. Is there anything that that he could have done differently, or have other teams just done a good job kind of preventing opportunities for him? Well, there's a couple things on that. It's harder and harder to return punts because of the ability to. It's harder to block punts. We were fortunate. We got a block a couple of weeks ago, um, but people are getting so much better at kicking it into corners and hold, if, if nobody's coming, holding it for a couple of counts, um, as well as you know getting three and four wide receivers in the game and, and, and covering punts and stuff. And did I think we would be better in the punt return game uh, this year? Absolutely. Uh, with a guy like Phillip back there. Um, but some of it is just kind of the nature of what's going on in college football right now. It's just like, you know, I thought we'd have an opportunity to return a kick and their kid kicked it out every time. So we didn't get any chances there and kick return has been a, a big weapon for us. It's been a great offensive play for us to start off a lot, off a lot of games or, or to score. And we didn't get that, that chance. So, um, you know, we had the muff punt. Um, we had a chance on another one. It's a 50 50 call. Maybe that flips the field and we get a score there. Uh, but, um, you know, special teams, we need to, we, we've been good. I didn't think we were very good on, on Saturday, and we've got to be better this next Saturday. It struck me that uh, during the senior day ceremonies, uh, Reggie Stubblefield was kind of reacting like he'd been here as long as Skyler <laughs> had. Uh, can you just take us inside that moment you had with him and you hugged him on the field there? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Reggie didn't know he was going to be able to come here. We, we had him committed here and then something happened and they, and he wasn't going to work. So we had to go through an appeal process with Reg and he was sitting home. And I think he thought he was done with college football. Uh, and he was home for a few weeks. I, if I recall, I may be off on the timing, whether it was two weeks or four weeks or whatever. And then we appealed and we were able to, to win the appeal. And so we, called him back and said, Hey, we won the appeal. You're, you're coming to Kansas state. And, and just the reaction on the phone of that kid, whenever that was, it was in July, I believe I could have been late June, but it was sometime either late June or July, how excited he was that he got a chance. I knew we were going to get a kid that had energy. I didn't know it was this kind of energy. Uh, and, uh, he's been, you know, a, a guy that's played really well for us. You know, he had the broken thumb or, or hand. So he was in a cast for a while, but uh, that was a special moment because he realized a couple things. One, how fortunate he was to be playing football for starters and how fortunate he was to be at Kansas State because he realized in a short period of time how great the fan base is, how great the university is, and how cool it is to say, I played football at K-State. Has it been a fun experience for you welcoming all these transfers this year? It seems like most of them have enjoyed it. Yeah, they fit in really well. And um, that's, the, that's the hard thing is – you, you, you know, especially because none of those kids, uh, none of those kids visited and you couldn't visit. So uh, they all came sight unseen and, and uh, we hit home runs with the quality of, 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 of kids. They are as well as the quality of players they are. Um, and uh, you know, we, we know that this is kind of what college football is becoming a little bit. So you have to embrace it, but they have to be able to fit uh, our culture and fit our locker room. Um, when, when you did watch replays of the game, were there more opportunities there in the passing game than it maybe looked at on first? Yeah, uh, absolutely. There were, um, but I think we were flushed so quickly or people at our feet or hands up that we just weren't able to get back to our second read. Some of that process of, uh, determining whether a kid is going to be a good lock, locker room fit and good fit for your program. Um, well, in those cases, it was Zooming with those kids and Zooming with their families an awful lot, not just having a phone call, but making sure that I can see eye to eye and Coach Malone or Coach Klanderman or Coach Mess or whatever coach is seeing eye to eye and having lengthy, lengthy conversations with them, not just a handful, but a bunch of them. Um, you know, I look at Russ Yeast and, and Julius Brents and, and recruited those guys for an it seems like an awful long time, may have been a month, but it seemed like an awful long time. And uh, trying to get to know them, trying to get it to see where they would fit in as, as a player, but fit into our, as a person and fit in and tell them how, you know, we were going to challenge them, but, but love them as well. And, um, 
you know, we, we vetted our, our guys really well to make sure that they would be adding something, not just on the football field, but more importantly, off the football field. And uh, um, that's what I'm excited about for those guys that we did get. Two, two guys coming to speak to us, dude, today, two players. I just want to ask you about them. Uh, the first one, just big picture, Felix, um, what he's meant to this team this season. Yeah, Felix has uh, had a phenomenal season, and uh, I think all of us knew he was going to have a really good season. Um, and he's exceeded a lot of people's expectations. Um, probably not Felix's because he's a pride, prideful kid. And once again, I keep going back to watching him learn from Wyatt Hubert about how you play this game relentlessly. And coach Wyatt is always riding him to play harder and play faster. And, uh, he's uh, a, a guy that, uh, has been relentless to the quarterback. You know, he makes a great play and it bounces right back to the kid from Baylor. I mean, you, that was one of the breaks that for, for four weeks we were getting. And we get a strip sack and it bounces right back up to the kid for a completion. Um, but he's uh, had a great season and, and I'm excited. He's still really a young player. And then the other one, of course, is the guy who's got a thousand yards rushing. Yep. He needs 36 receiving yards to become only the fourth in Big 12 history to have a thousand and five hundred in the same season. Well, what, what more can you say about him? You know, he's an explosive play waiting to happen all the time. You know, he, he bursted through and got us. Uh, get us back in the game on, on a big run. Um, that's what he does. And um, he just, he loves playing this game. That's the thing is we always ask about, ask guys in the recruiting process, how much do you love playing football? High school football, it's, I love it. You got to love college football. You got to love next level football. And that's one kid that absolutely loves every part of this game from the, from the grind of a fall camp to uh, strength and conditioning, to the recovery part of it, to the games, to the camaraderie in the locker room. Um, he's had a, a, a great season. Like I thought he would. You mentioned a few times just that with, with everything having to be done via zoom the last, year plus that it's been maybe a little bit harder to create any kind of bond with other coaches. I don't know. Have you ever interacted with Steve Sarkeesian? Have you guys ever crossed paths before at all? Never have. Um, so be my first time uh, meeting Sark. I think Tui knows him uh, a little, a little bit. Uh, uh, ben Newman knows him, you know, cause Ben had worked with Alabama as well. And so um, I know he's a unbelievable bright, bright offensive mind. Some of the creativity that creativity that those guys are doing offensively is, is pretty unique. Okay. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone.